This is Betty Stanley, and I'm standing in a most unlikely place for me. I'm in an organ pit. I've been standing here listening to the music of Clyde Derby, who is, of course, very familiar to all of you because he's a very well-known theater organist, or I should just say a plain organist, because you're very well-known in this area, Clyde. Uh, this is a beautiful instrument. Where'd you ever find this? We took this out of the Music Hall Theater in Seattle, Washington. But it's in such beautiful condition. It looks like a brand new one. Well, it had been played all the time that it was up there and well-maintained. Was I right? Uh, didn't you say that this is uh, one of the last of the really big organs that they made, um, one of the big colossal ones, and then they stopped making them completely? That's true. 1928, when the sound movies came in, they stopped. And the man who installed this originally was the one who moved this and then installed it again, so that really kind of accounts for it being in such wonderful condition. Uh, it's kind of unusual. This is uh, Actually, this is a dining room that we're in. I've never heard of an organ in a dining room before. Uh, this is about the only one of its kind in the United States in this size in a dining room. Well, it's just tremendous. Uh, I'm kind of amazed, though, at all of the things that are going on here. Uh, can you explain technically or, you know, kind of easily what this is? There are four, four switchboards? Uh, four manual, uh, 16 rank, a Robert Morton theater organ. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, two and a half octaves on the pedals? Correct. Uh, how many uh, men did it take to install this? How long did it take to install something like this? We had three organ technicians from Seattle working night and day practically for about three weeks. Oh dear, well that's a, that's a lot. How, how many pieces are there to it? I mean, how much room did it take up to move all of this? Well, you're standing directly over the chambers and uh, 17 feet down is the floor and uh, they are 40 by 40 crammed full of pipes and wood and sound effects and all sorts of things that you can imagine. I'd like to ask you some kind of technical questions. Uh, how many pipes are involved in an organ this size? Uh, there are 1,240 pipes in this one, and uh, it's very large for this type of an installation. Well, on the 1,240 pipes, um, how many sounds? Does each pipe make a couple of different sounds? Each pipe uh, has its own, it makes one note, and you might say it's just a collection of tin whistles. <laughs> so you've got 1,240 different tin whistles downstairs. Uh, this is very different. You know, I'm so used to thinking about electrical organs. Now, you don't imitate the sound, you have the actual sound. Is correct. that correct? Mm -hmm. And so you can actually, um, you're not reproducing, but you have downstairs what instruments? Oh, we have such things as tambourines, drums, uh, snare drums, uh, castanets, uh, bird whistles, train whistles, a, re a real fire siren. A real fire, a real siren. fire siren? And uh, also uh, Chinese gongs, xylophones, marimbas, you name it, we got it. Well, instead of you just telling me, I'd love to hear how you reproduce them, actually, on the organ. Can you... Let's suppose we demonstrate a few of them. All right. Okay, we'll start off with some uh, uh, instrumental sounds, like a marimba harp. Reiterating. And that instrument played without uh, repeat is a beautiful harp in itself, like a marimba. We have a thing called a chrysoglot here. The who? It's just a set of bells, Betty. And then the orchestra bells, very bright sounds. Also have cathedral chimes. And now we'll get into the noisemakers. We have a real live snare drum. Crash cymbal. And also that same drum with just a tap. Tambourine. Tom Tom. Is that a real honest to goodness Tom Tom? It certainly is. And we have the same drum muffled. Actually, it's another Tom Tom in the other chamber, so we can go back and forth from chamber to chamber with these two drums. And uh, they call this a wood drum. It sounds like a woodpecker. <laughs> we also have sleigh bells for around Christmas time. Chinese gong. Sounds like I'm tolling something there. Drum cymbal. This is cymbal can be operated from the lower manual. And then getting into more instruments, we have a genuine xylophone. And the 
orchestra bells repeating. And I even have a few down here by my right foot, Betty, such as horse's hoofs. Here comes the horse. Horse's hoofs? And uh, I don't think I'm going to blow the real fire siren. But you have a real honest to goodness fire siren. Yeah. I'm afraid of what would happen if we did. We might call a bunch of firemen over. But uh, we have a few of the toe studs that can be reached real fast. Those the crash what? cymbal crash. and the Chinese gong. And these are the same, but they're operated by your right foot. And then we have uh, a uh, steamboat whistle and a train whistle. And then, of course, I can blow the fire bell, I believe, safely. Nobody has theater organs anymore. What happens to uh, people who like to play the organ like you? Well, I don't know, Betty. There are a lot of theater organists yet, and there's a lot of places for them. Is there very much interest in it? Do very many, are very many people interested in theater organs? There yeah, certainly is. There's a tremendous amount of interest in theater organs, both from a, a standpoint of clubs and then individuals having them in their homes. Oh, you have one in your home, I know, but yeah. you say there are clubs for people who are interested in theater organs? Yes. I see. George Wright uh, did some concerts uh, in the Old Fox. Some farewell concerts, and they were very well received. There were people standing in the rain, uh, clear around the block, around the Fox, waiting to get in. In the rain. That's a 4,000-seat theater. They filled it. And they filled it. Yes. Good heavens. I think that's just great. Yeah. Uh, you say you have one in your home. Yes, it's quite a bit smaller than this. However. Well, do, can you accommodate it? Did you have to build a special pit like this? Sure did, yeah. You really must love it. I don't... Uh, I, this is a whole new world for me, so I'm not, you know, quite up with it. What happens to people, though, who have been theater organists? Do they just have to sort of wait for somebody to say, please come and play my organ? Uh, no, uh, there are concerts uh, held at uh, different people's homes and in theaters where organs still remain. And they have concerts, and of course all these individuals who are uh, top-notch theater organists have a chance to show off their skills. I think that's great. I'm going to let you play some more. And I'm, how about putting all of this together and showing you how it really works? We possibly could. We could use the xylophone and some of the Chinese numbers for a little number called uh, Chinatown, My Chinatown. Gee, it's like being a conductor. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> 